Hello, everybody. Welcome to the very first Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate Takeaway with Ristretto. I hope you're doing well tonight. Tonight we're going to be, I don't know, showing off some stuff in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. I thought about what I wanted to do for my first kind of little mini YouTube series while I'm stuck without internet here. And, I don't know, I wanted to show off the process of having an idea of looking at a weapon or looking at a piece of armor and going, I want to do something with that. I, like, it might not be the best armor, the best weapon, but I want to do something with that. So, that's what we're going to get up to tonight. I'm going to exit our, our hall here in Valhabar, run by the Huntress for Hire, and we'll, we'll get to explaining what we're doing this evening. There's a Black Gravios, a Black Diabolos, and a Brachydios and a Stygian Zenogre. Now, see, these are all difficult sounding, but there's only one of these monsters that I actually don't want to hunt, and that's, that's Black Gravios. So, goodbye. <laughs> Go get them, boys and girls. All right. So, let me jump on out here, and I'll start talking about what we're going to get up to this evening. I figured I would just show off the process of doing something in Monster Hunter that I love to do. Maybe part of what got me into the series So I'll show that off tonight. So, let me get into what we're going to be doing. For a little while now, I have had a specific weapon, or pair of weapons here, sitting in my box. The Ent... I actually don't know how to, know how to pronounce this. Entomotheos. Entomotheos. I'm not sure what the intonation should be for that, but... These are some of, you can't actually see them with this armor set, but I'll show them off in a second. These are some of my favorite weapons in the series, these dual blades here. Let me switch Let me switch armor sets real quick, so you can see them a little better. These are some of my favorite weapons in the entire series. I first used them in Monster Hunter Free Me Night. There's some insect dual blades, and the insect weapons in Free Me Night get really early, nice, natural purple, just from killing bugs, essentially. So they were some, one of my favorites in that game. In this game, they're not quite as useful. You get you get access to them a little bit later. And while they're 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 okay, they don't have the highest raw or the highest sharpness. They need to have their element awakened. At least they have nice natural purple still, and they have two slots and 30 affinity. And I was looking at these, and I was like, what could I do with these? They're a little bit finicky, where they're like they need to be awakened, they need uh, they need more status, because 19 isn't a whole lot in this game. And so I've been meaning to make a set for these for a little while now, so I thought that over the course of a little mini-series here, I thought we would take a look at set building for these guys and kind of talk through what sort of skills we want on these, and then go through the process of actually farming up the gear and testing out maybe one or two or three different status sets to see what kind of set is going to mesh well with these guys in the long run. Not just, I guess we'll talk a little bit about what my goal is for the set in a little bit here, but I just want to start off by, I don't know, showing these, showing these weapons off somehow. Alright, so, I want to talk a little bit about what I thought about putting on these guys. Now, clearly they need to be awakened, so you need to have free element. That's going to be one of the skills that we need here. I guess I'll jump over to the set builder to explain my, my thought process for the next one. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up here. And we'll get to building the set. That's our first step here. So, let me go ahead and open up Firefox here. This is the set builder I use, and so we're going to go ahead and start plugging things in. We are male, we're in a blade master. I'm not going to be doing special permit, I guess in my G rank file where we are in our playthrough right now over on Twitch usually, we're not quite at the end of the game. We, are, we do have access to special permit quests, but I usually like to kind of finish a whole rank in the previous rank's gear before then really committing to farming up armor pieces and weapons from that rank. So we're not really doing special permit stuff quite yet, so I'm going to go ahead and change it to G3. This is a two slot weapon, and I'm not going to click any relic armor since I don't really have access to those yet. So. Clearly, we're going to need Awakening, which is down here somewhere. I'm going to go ahead, now that we've done those parameters, I'm going to move this down a little bit so you guys can see some of the, the skills that get activated there. All right, so where is Awakening? There it is. So we have Awakening here. And then a couple other skills I was thinking about here. Now, these duels have pretty nice natural purple sharpness, so we don't need a ton of skills, but I would like to get Razor Sharp if I could. And then the other thing I was thinking about is what do we want to do with these? Do we want to do status up? Do we want to do status crit? They have nice natural affinity that could work. And this actually led me down a little bit of a rabbit hole of researching how status works in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. So I thought we'd kind of break this down as we uh, as we go ahead and we make this set. So I guess these duels have natural purple. They have two slots, which is nice. They have 30% affinity by default. So that's like a third of our hits are going to crit, which is pretty nice. They have 19 unawakened paralysis. I like doing this live. I know I could probably put this in later on as an overlay to a video because this is editing, but editing, or there is editing available when you're doing something pre recorded like this, but I'd rather do it live. This is what I'm used to. Now, in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, 
I looked up a little bit about how the status skills work. Specifically, I looked up how status crit works. This is the uh, the Japanese AT wiki, or I guess MH4G wiki. And this is the page, it's translated, so it's kind of loosely translated here. But that talks about status crit. So this is talking about what status crit actually does. I don't know why it says heart attack special. But it increases abnormal conditions, para, poison, sleep, blast, given during critical attacks. The big sword, which is great sword, gets a 1.15 times status application. The bow gets 1.5, so that's a lot, and then all other weapons are 1.2 for a modifier. So what that basically means is... Status crit. Crit will give us... Oops, it helps if you spell right. A 1.2 times mod every time we crit and this is pretty important and apply status so that's kind of stringent right that's two different roles you have to pass to get status crit to actually proc on a hit so you have to crit which at least these duels start off with a 30 percent affinity that's pretty nice and you also have to roll a status something in for ultimate is that status is always this is no matter what other skills you're using status is always a one out of three chance to prop. So every three hits or so. It's not gonna be exactly every three hits, but you have a third chance to hit with status every time you hit a monster with a status weapon. That's why you see sometimes you'll hit something with a sword and you won't see the little flash of like para or poison, even though it's a para or poison type weapon. Mm -hmm. That's why. So status is always a one third chance to proc. With our affinity, we're gonna have a third chance to crit as well, but that's not great. So this is kind of a weak skill. I looked up the difference between status crit and status up, and it, I think for most weapons, it's pretty safe to say that status up would be a better choice for this setup. Status up is basically status up one. I looked this up earlier. Status up one is a one point, I think it's 1.15 mod, and plus 10 to your display status. So it adds a little bit of that mod we had before from, a, from status crit, but it also gives us plus 10 to your display status. I almost want to double check this here because I'm not totally sure. But status up 2 is I think a 1.2 mod and that same plus 10 to your display status. So clearly status up 2 is going to be just as powerful as status crit or even more so while also giving us the, the added benefit of being totally consistent. You don't have to pass any rolls to get that. So clearly status up, I mean, on top of that, you also just have to invest five skill points between status one and status two to upgrade. You don't need another separate skill. So status up in one and two are a better skill all around, especially for weapons where they're not critting very often. The only thing that gives me pause here is I'm curious about how dual blades is going to work with these. Dual blades has a very specific mechanic where it has many multi-hits in most of its comp in most of its attacks. Certain multi-hits, like the Beyblade attack or the Demon Dance or your Arch Demon Dance, have a mechanic that's existed since second gen. I think maybe even first gen. I don't know if Affinity was in first gen. Might not have been, but at least since second gen. I know it's in there because I've played Freebie Knight. Where when you attack with one of those with one of those attacks, let's say you do your Demon Dance, if you roll a crit, let's say you have 50% affinity, if you get that half chance to crit, all of the hits in the Demon Dance will do a crit, and that is still true even in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate here. So, I'm curious about if we have a an attack like the Beyblade attack, or Demon Dance, and we get that crit, where the whole Demon Dance lights up with crits, how much status could we apply? So I'm kind of curious to try out status crit before we actually go and do the, the sort of adult, responsible thing of uh, doing status up instead. So I think we might try out a couple different status sets here. I'm going to jump on over to the armor set builder here again. So, basically, I want to see just how potent status crit is on its own without any other status boosting skills and then we can go ahead and we can switch off to status up maybe after that and see how those work too clearly this wouldn't work for most weapons like if this was for sword and shield where you're just kind of like bam, 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 you're just hitting the monster a couple times in a row and having to roll crit and status chances on each of those hits it'd be a little rough but if you're doing let's say crit draw great sword or demon or demon day dual blades excuse me where you can actually like guarantee not guarantee but guarantee there's gonna be large bits of crits whether it's from crit draw or from those giant crit combos maybe it's a little more interesting so we'll try that out let's see what this gives us if i go ahead and i search for this oh invalid equipment is pinned it is really so it is these are some weed master or gunner pieces i was looking at this on a different computer earlier and so i forgot to come over here and get rid of those that's fine we'll get those out of there you guys couldn't see what I was doing there, but I was just removing some pinned equipment. 
Now we can go ahead and we can search for those armor skills. So you can see we can clearly get these. We have over 200 results, and one of the pieces here isn't even needed to get us three, these three skills, Razor Sharp, Awaken, and Status Crit. So let's see what other skills we can get. I'm going to hit the More Skills button, see what it gives us. You can do the same thing in Athena's Armor Set Search, I think. I just prefer this interface a little bit. We have a lot of choices for what we could do. See, we could do Crit I 3 on top of that. We could do Challenger 2, I think. Yeah, we can do Challenger 2 there as well. Hmm. Challenger 2 would be a nice all-rounder skill, just because it would give us so much in the way of when you get that active, you'd have boosted raw and boosted affinity. Let's see which one's more efficient. If we go ahead and we throw on Challenger 2, and then we search, you can see some of the pieces we're going to be using here, but let's go ahead and see more skills. What does it give us? No other skills can be added. Okay, that's fine. Real quick, just for the sake of experimentation, I want to take off Challenger. Scroll on down here. See what happens if we get that Crit I 3. I think that would be 55% affinity all the time for us. I think Crit I 3 is just 25% affinity in this game. I could be wrong about that, too. I haven't fact-checked everything about this stuff. I'm not great at damage calc. I'm going to be totally honest with you. Ooh, look at this. On top of Crit I 3, we could get status attack 1. That sounds pretty nice. Why don't we do that? I know I said I was going to just do status crit, but this sounds pretty okay to me. So, a free element 4 3 slot charm. Monoblos Greaves X, the Grand Mizuha Sash, Io Prey of Ambrace's X, either the Empress Male or the Emperor or the Kaiser Male, and the Empress Crown. Why don't we see what some of these look like? Some of these Lenostra pieces, some of these Io Prey pieces, and see if it would look totally ugly or not. That's something else I'm a little bit weird about, is that I know that for the sake of just testing damage calc and testing status calc, as it were, here, it doesn't really make a whole big difference if you if your set looks good or not, but I'm, I'm kind of particular about it. I don't think I have G-Rank Lenostra pieces in here. Let's see if I can trade them. That would be over in... Or I guess I can trade the trader here. I'm so used to going to the trader in Dundorma, I didn't even think about it. Alright, let's see if we have G-Rank Lenostra pieces we can trade for. I don't think we do. Lenostra Cortex. Nope, that's high-rank pieces. Pretty sure. Yeah, so we don't have access to G-Rank Luna parts yet. Must be locked behind some quest I haven't done yet. So that kind of removes some of these some of these chances. I don't think we'll be able to make that exact set. That's a bit of a bummer. Let's jump back into Firefox there. Alright, so we can't do Luna stuff. I'm going to tell it that. And then maybe we'll drop it down to uh, Crudai 2. See if that has any results still. Yeah, we can still make some stuff like that. So this would be Status Crit, Awaken, Razor Sharp, Status Attack 1, Crit I 2. It's not going to be the most boosted raw. This is definitely a set that's mostly focused on Status Attack. Which is kind of, eh. You wouldn't want that in a lot of contexts, but I don't know. Take a look here. So those are the pieces we can use for that. Can we get any more skills? It says we can get Crit I 3 still. Can we really? Oh, I put the Empress Mask on there instead, which is, I think, the, the Gunner version. I was going to say, that would surprise me. Okay. Any other skills? Earplugs? Eh, I don't like earplugs very much. I'm weird. Okay, so it looks like Mono Greaves, Grand Mizuha Sash, Io Prey Vambraces are pretty set in stone there. We could use Mono Vambraces, though. Garuga Mail, Io Prey Helm. Hmm, I wonder what some of these would look like. Let's take a look, why not? Let's see what these different pieces would look like. Like I said, I'm weird. I like having my armor sets look good in addition to getting us some of the skills we desire. So I think, let's take a look at the Kaiser Crown first. We need a large Elder Dragon gem for that, and I'm not super into the look of that. At least not for this set. For this set, I'm kind of envisioning something that it might not be totally, totally color-coordinated, but I want the pieces to look like old-school Monster Hunter, because these insect, blade, or insect dual blades are kind of from a time where old Monster Hunter was also a thing. Okay, so the other options are an Io Prey Helm and the Mono Helm. So let's see what those look like. So the Mono Helm looks like that. I think I already have that. Nope, I guess I don't. I thought I did. That's an okay look. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Let's see about the Io Prey Helm. I think I like the Io Prey Helm. If, me if memory serves, I really like the Io Prey stuff. Yeah, I do. It looks like some old simple armor. So why don't we go with that for the helm? Let's see here. Let me lock that in here. Let me tell it I want to use... That IO Prey Helm. Cool. Got some more options here. So we have Empress Vambraces, Mono Vambraces, Grand Mizuha, Chaos Greaves. Let's see what some of the let's see what the Grand Mizuha thing looks like, because that, that seems pretty constant across the different 
armors we're working on here. Thankfully, we can make it. It's a little weird looking, but it might look okay with the insect looking dual blades. A little out of place, but eh, it looks like it's going to be in any of these sets we're making, so might as well roll with it. The nice part is we can already make it, too. We have all the stuff we need to make that, because we fought quite a bit of camellios so far. That's cool. All right. Let's lock that in, I suppose. Let me tell it. I guess just for the sake of experimentation, let's see if we take out the Grand Mizuha Sash, we can't do anything. It says you have to use that. Okay, that's kind of what I thought, so that doesn't surprise me. Let me tell it that we can go ahead and use those Grand Mizuha parts again. Is there any other stuff pinned here? Mm. No other stuff pinned I would want to use. There's some armor pieces I really don't like there. Okay, I'm fine with the Grand Mizuha Sash, so we'll go ahead and we'll pin that as well. I'll try and make this so you guys can see a little more of what's going on. Okay. Gives us a couple choices for Greaves. We have the Mono Greaves, Chaos Greaves, Vangus Greaves. Let's take a look at what those three look like real quick. Chaos Greaves, I think I just made for a gunner set. I don't know if I like how they look. That would look okay with the, uh, that would look all right with the Mizuha stuff, honestly. There's worse stuff. We need some antinomic wings which come from Chaos Core. We just got some the other day. We could do that. Might look all right. There's also an option to have Chaos Mail, too, as the uh, as the chest plate. I think that has the weird wings, though. I'm not going to like that if that's the case. Chaos Mail. Yeah, not into the wings for this set. That's not the look I'm, lo I'm going for. All right, let's see. What else do we have? We have Grand Gloaming Plate. Ooh, this could look good. This is a Dar and Moran piece. Hmm. With the Ioprey helmet and some Monoblow stuff. Wouldn't really go with the Camellios part, though. Chaos jacket. Or no, Chaos mail. Three slot body is an option. So that means any piece we could use with three slots, we could make work. That opens up some fashion possibilities. That's kind of fun. Grand Yamato Dot. That's this one. Oh, man. That's not what I want for my dual blood set. Garuga mail. Where's Garuga? There it is. We already have that one, and that would really fit the look of the set. I just don't like Garuga's stuff very much. I don't know. I'm not into the cape. I know everyone's into the cape in G-Rank, but I'm not. <laughs> this is around the time where I would usually just thank chat for sitting and chilling with me and being like, hey, thank you for actually sitting here and watching me set build. Another option is Nursilla's Mail. I think it's rare... It's not rare 10. It's rare 9, though. I was thinking about using this for this set. I think it's interesting looking. Might also hide the uh, Camellio's waist pretty well. Or it might clip really hard, one of the two. It might also hide the cool dual blades, but I feel like it's sort of... I don't know. This definitely doesn't say old school Monster Hunter, though. This says, like, weird shrouded mecha armor. It looks cool, though. Hmm. Well, for now, let's look at the monoblow stuff, if I can't decide the chest yet. Let's look at the mono van braces. Oh, right, it's these ones. I was picturing something a little different. So that's what the arms look like. Let's see what the legs look like. Mono, that's mono devil. We're looking at mono X, not mono devil. Was I thinking of the mono devil stuff? No? Hmm, those are not what I had pictured. They definitely look like old-school Monster Hunter, though. They're kind of kind of kludgy looking. <laughs> I don't mind it. Hmm. Mono Greaves, Chaos Greaves. Mono Van Braces, Empress Van Braces. Definitely can't do the Empress Van Braces, because that's more G-Rank Luna that we haven't gotten the materials for yet. Really wants us to use the Mono Van Braces. Wrath Soul Braces Z. Okay, what does that look like? I think I might have those, too. Just some blue Rathalos arms. Could be worse. Hmm. And the others, it has an option for Chaos fan braces. The Chaos stuff would look nice with certain other pieces, I think. But with the Ioprey helm, though. Let's go with the mono stuff. Or let's, let's think about the mono stuff. Why don't I just go ahead and start making some of this stuff so we can look at it? That's another thing I'll often do if I'm trying to decide on things. I think when I make these... 
it's gonna make it so I can't make the other piece, I'm pretty sure. We need to go out and hunt some monoblos. That's fine. Some scarlet stout horns and some monoblos chines. That won't be too bad to get. Um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and make that Camellio's coat. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this or anything. We may reset our save back to the last saved thing. <laughs> we end up not using this stuff. Io Prey Helm X. Can I make it? I can't remember. Nope. I need two avian stout bones. It's gonna look like that though. Hmm. Those legs in that waist, man. I don't know about that. Hmm. I don't know about that. Where's some other helms? I'm thinking about using the chaos pieces. If we use the chaos pieces, I don't know if I want the Io Prey Helm anymore. Iopre Helm, the Mono Helm, Ignactor Helm, Kaiser Crown, Rathian Helm, Empress Crown. I feel like the Iopre one's gonna be the best looking one out of the bunch, honestly. The least offensive, if you think about it that way. So we'll stick with it. But let's see about some other stuff. Instead of Mono Greaves, let's look at Chaos Greaves. I think we already looked at these a second ago. They would look nice with that Camellios. They would fit pretty nicely in terms of color. Okay. Why don't we tell it that we want the Chaos Greaves instead and see what it kills us then? Okay. Not many options then. We gotta use the Mono Vambraces. And then our options are down to Grand Gloaming Plate, Garuga Mail X, Nursilla Mail Z, and Garuga Mail S. Why don't we see what the Nursilla Mail would look like? Those Mono Vambraces are gonna be a bummer. They're kind of big. clips super bad. Okay, so we cannot use that. That is a disaster. I'm guessing Garuga is... Oh, the Garuga is not the same way. The Garuga kind of covers that stuff up pretty nicely, honestly. Hmm. What if instead of the Chaos Greaves, we went with the Garuga Mail, since we already have that? Could you guys not see what I was doing? <laughs> if I just had this over, over screen while I was looking at this, then I apologize. Here's what the Garuga mail looks like. Let me show what the Nursilla mail looks like. Still getting used to this stuff. Here's the Nursilla. It clips really bad. I don't like that. Can't do that. Garuga mail, however, looks pretty okay, I think. I always have a weird sense of what I want with these sets. Rugamail, Mono Greaves, Mono Vambraces. Cool. So we could do a mix of Iopre, Garuga, Camellios, and Monoblos. Looks like that's what we want to do here. Okay. Well, at least we can see what that looks like. What decorations does that need? That would be some crit status jewels, some disabler jewels, some expert jewels, and some razor jewels. And we get us crit I2, status attack 1, awaken, razor sharp, and status crit. That sounds like a pretty okay set. Clearly, if you wanted to get more damage or more status, you'd probably go with status, at, status attack up. Instead of status crit, you'd probably go for challenger instead of crit eye. But we're not doing this for optimal, optimal set building. We're just doing this to check out a cool thing with status crit. All right, let me go ahead and throw on a set here. We'll think about what we want to use to fight monoblows here in just a moment. Okay, let's see. First, let's go get those um, avian stout bones, and then we'll jump over and we'll start hunting monoblos and making this set. Why don't we use, yeah, we'll just use this longsword to go out and get the stout bones. Up to the gathering hall we go, or up to the elder hall, rather. Out to the ancestral step. Everyone's favorite map. <laughs> I should really remember to switch into my high rank carving set for stuff like this. It'll make the carving a little easier, but that's okay. It doesn't matter so much. We'll be just fine. I forget there's no music during these. I thought a little bit about trying to play some Monster Hunter music in the background that was just like orchestrated concerts or 
other game soundtracks while I was doing this sort of recording, but didn't feel like it would fit very well. So we'll just stick to the in-game stuff. Which means for now, you and I are enjoying that Monster Hunter ambiance of walking by some Aptana. <laughs> just the footfall of the hunter. I'll probably try and split these up into different recordings. So I can upload them on slightly different days. I'll probably do two the first day, but... I don't know. I figure in the end we'll have a couple of days worth of videos here. So even if my internet stays down for a while, there'll still be some new Monster Hunter to watch and some new Monster Hunter to play. I'm enjoying getting to play it all. I was saying a little bit while I was testing that I wondered if this would feel different to me than streaming. And of course it does. There's nobody in the chat to talk to with me right now. But I don't feel too weird talking to myself and nobody else. The monologuing, I guess, <laughs> comes a little bit easily. I think I always talk to myself a little bit. While I'm walking around the house, I'll be, like, talking out what I'm thinking for the day or <laughs> ranting about this or that. I feel like especially things that make me want to rant, I'll talk to myself about. Which I think would make me sound 100% more crazy, but... That's it. can't believe they would put that hitbox on this monster. can't believe it. All right, there's one. I think we needed two. There's a Celtus over there that we're going to avoid. And here comes another Jagia. Really sloppily hunting this Jagia with Longsword. Yeah, I guess the goal here is to divide up this whole process of choosing a concept to explore, researching it, set building it, grinding up the materials, and then testing it out. Just kind of make that something we spread out over a couple few videos. Kind of show it off. Like, hey, here's one of my favorite parts of the series. Picking something out. Showing it off. We're just picking something out and really playing around with it. Not even just necessarily throwing it off. Right, I'm gonna kill one more of these guys and then we'll go. That's good. Shut up a far caster. And I do. Neat. Alright. I think that's going to do it for this first little bout of recording. I'm going to take a pause here. Like I said, I think this will probably go up with the same part as the Monoblos hunt we're about to do, or the couple Monoblos hunts we're about to do, just because, I don't know. <laughs> you guys shouldn't just have to watch me set build and nothing else for a day. So I'll give you guys some, some hunts to watch here. Alright, I'll be right back with some Monoblos. I'll see you guys in just a moment. Bye-bye. <laughs> 